Welcome to the Microfinance Podcast. Listen to inspiring interviews and take a look at tools and products that are used in the field. This podcast is produced by Microsafe, market-led solutions for financial services, and is brought to you by Moving Planet Films. Credit scoring makes sense for an organization once they're already a pretty good lender and they're pretty large and they have a lot of data and they basically have their organizational ducks in a row, so to speak. Um, so if a lender already knows how to make individual loans and they're not just going to use credit scoring as a crutch, and if they have some size, if they have, say, 10,000 outstanding loans and maybe 15,000 historical loans have been paid off, then they have, probably have enough data. And if they have their management uh, processes under control enough that they can implement a very large change in the organization, then they're, they're basically ready to go. Um, I'm assuming that they have a decent MIS, standard database system, not Excel, not something on paper. It also assumes that you're not a group lender because to my knowledge, there's no examples of even on paper scorecards that work for group lenders. So those are the basic requirements. I wouldn't suggest scoring be used in an organization that doesn't already make loans very efficiently and have low arrears and know what they're doing. So for example, banks that are downscaling into microfinance and sort of no scoring and don't want to put in the effort or are afraid of spending the money to learn the standard microfinance technologies but want to rely on scoring, um, a lot of banks are hoping to do that and I think it won't work very well and the only example or two that we have of that were failures. So you have to be a pretty good lender, pretty big, have your ducks in a row and then you can try scoring. Is it a risk management tool or is it a way to cut costs? Of course it's both. Um, if you manage your risk better you're going to cut costs. What's the direct way it would cut costs is not in the way that most people think it would. In rich countries you use credit scoring to upfront in your evaluation process. Instead of having a loan officer go and do a lot of time intensive data gathering and getting to know the borrower, you have them fill out a paper form, you get information from the credit bureau and you run it through your scorecard and that gives you a, a risk forecast that's pretty accurate. Uh, if you're lending to rich salaried consumers in a rich country that has a credit bureau for something like a car or a home or a well collateralized thing or a credit card. If we're looking at microfinance borrowers, uh, this isn't the situation. They're probably not in the credit bureau they have a microenterprise, which is a highly risky thing compared to being salaried. They're in a low income country that just has a lot more risks going on. And you just don't have all the informational inputs you have in other places. So you're not going to be able in general, or at least at the start, to cut out this costly, um, you know, an intelligent, highly trained loan officer goes and visits the, the borrower and sees how much inventory they have and how many customers are flowing through and where they're located on the street, you still need that information. Once the loan officer comes back and has made sure that they've gathered that information, they made sure that the person isn't a drunk, they're not a wife beater, they're not a liar, they pay their bills to their suppliers on time from the references they've checked. Once they've done all that checking and gathered some quantitative data but also done the subjective checking, then if the loan officer thinks, okay, let's make this loan, then apply scoring and then scoring at that point will probably tell you that about 10 or 15 percent of the cases that you thought were ready to go aren't really ready to go they're high risk and then you could either reject those cases or you could go back and say well okay this case is risky because it's a carpenter is this an exceptionally safe carpenter is it a normal carpenter is it a below average carpenter or you could uh, you could change the terms and conditions. You say, well, it's extra risk, let's up the interest rate, let's require more collateral, let's reduce the loan size, reduce the number of installments, et cetera. So you're not going to save time in the loan officer's evaluation. In fact, it's going to take a little bit longer because you're adding another step to the process. Where you will save time and cut costs is in collections. So with the lenders I've worked with, they their loan officers typically spend about two of every five days total, 40% of their time in collections. Well, if you can reduce, if you can take out the five or 10% of their most risky borrowers that they would have lent to, but scoring says these are the more riskiest ones, 
you'll cut down their time in collections by way more than five or ten percent. Um, generally, we, we find it might save them four hours a week, eight hours a week. So if you took all that time from collections and put it into marketing and disbursement, assuming there's demand for that, et cetera, then you would reduce your time in collections and save money there, and you're also increasing your loan portfolio. Credit scoring is also a risk management tool. Why? Finance is all about risk. What credit scoring does is gives you, quantifies a certain type of risk, repayment risk, say the risk of ever reaching 30 days in a given loan, and it summarizes the risk in a single number. So you've no, no longer got a set of things like how big is their monthly payment compared to their cash flow, how big is their guarantee compared to, the, to, to what they owe, um, et cetera. You have a single number that summarizes it as a probability. So it, that's really useful. Um, humans can sort of put together four or five factors really well, but they can't put 50 together really well. And humans are really good at picking out if the person is a liar or if they beat their wife. The computer can't do that, but the computer can put the 50 factors together really well, trade one off against the other, and point out that, well, this case that looks good on the four or five factors that the people, the loan officers tend to focus on, actually looks really bad because of these other factors. Or you were charmed by the person's personality or whatever it was, and they're actually a high-risk case. Credit scoring relies on either data or having some expert who's going to say, these are the 20 factors that matter and here's their weights. So you either need to have experience lending in microfinance, preferably in that local context, or a large database, say 10,000, 15,000 loans that, you're lent, you're, that you've already made and you, that you know how well they repaid and you know what uh, characteristics of the loan you knew beforehand and you can relate therefore those characteristics of the loan with how well they repaid. So you have to have some data or some experience. That could be data or with a person. Obviously the data is actually more accurate people always believe they're more accurate. Um, so you need data. Generally, you also need a scoring champion within the organization. Uh, my experience is, in every case I've worked, the impetus for the project hasn't come from the organization. It's come from a donor who said, we want to do scoring. We'll fund it. Will you do it? So they said, yes, it's free. Um, we did everything. When we handed it off to them, they said, oh, uh, we're busy with changing our MIS or whatever it is. So you, you definitely need someone within the organization to, to move it through. The MIS system the organization would need is basically any database. Uh, it could be Access, it could be Oracle, it could be SQL Server, it could be whatever. Excel even will work if you're doing an expert scorecard, not a database scorecard. But in general, you want just a regular database. There's nothing specific about scoring that requires any specific software or database. Um, generally, what I advise is that you integrate the scorecard software with the existing MIS. And the idea here is that the loan, what happens is the frontline users are scared of scoring. They, don't want, they think it's going to be extra work, plus they don't believe it can improve on their own judgments. Um, so to get them to accept it, the first thing you have to do is get it in there and get them using it and, and not make it extra work. So if you integrate it in the MIS, they're already keying in the data anyway. That way you can pull the data they key in anyway and generate a score and they don't have to do anything different than they did before. So they go to the credit committee, everything up to the credit committee is the exact same as they've always done. They get to the credit committee and in addition to the standard reports they always have, they also have a report that says the credit risk and they can use it and they didn't have to do anything different. And if it's not integrated in the MIS, then you have to re it in. I've seen cases where they have a whole another computer sitting there in the office that only does credit scoring. It's not linked in any way with the other, um, with the rest of the MIS. That doesn't really make sense.